You're listening to Maximum Medicine Radio with host Doc Martin. Stay tuned in or call in. You won't want to miss what's happening next. How do you step into your maximum potential? How do you connect your spiritual drive with your physical path? Stick around as Doc Martin takes listeners on a journey through the seen and unseen, the accepted and the unbelievable. Get ready to meet the maximum you the world needs on Maximum Medicine Radio with Doc Martin now. Hi, everybody. I'm Doc Martin, Maximum Medicine Radio, and I'm here with Emmanuel ETA, a filmmaker, a rock and music journalist, a film journalist, Emmanuel, all things media, I guess. Yeah, pretty much. Absolutely. It's uh, really a passion of mine to uh, be involved with uh, everything that tells stories and uh, especially inspiring t- stories about us and how we can function better in this vast universe. And how we can change the world. Absolutely. And that starts with us. That start with us trying to uh, evolve and be more connected and, you know, thinking a bit uh, less about ourselves. I always say, you know, it's uh, not about me, myself, and I. It should be about me, myself, and we. That's how we evolve and the whole we connect. You know, one of the things that I sort of study on the side is reading all about uh, consciousness and the actual physics of it and the interdependent nature of it. And the more I learn, which is not very much, it's so obvious how connected we are. Every living every living being, not just humans. And so I'm going to make an assumption, and you correct me if I'm wrong, that your films are, well, why don't you tell me, what are your goals with your films? Well, so I started a a journey. It's really a journey because it it started uh, almost 15 years ago, 17 years ago, actually, when my first son was born, Felix. I that time I was doing uh, movies that were pretty, you know, just boring and lame and very commercial in a very simplistic ways, action, horror, that type of uh, silly commercial movie you see on Netflix. And I wanted to um, speak up about you know what's going on in the world and and when we look at the planet, uh, we have to admit it's not functioning very well. It's really dysfunctioning. It's uh, disconnected you know there's never been that much poverty that much suffering uh, wars uh, crises environmental crises as well so i thought well are we doomed or can can we do something about it and 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 where does it come from so i really embarked on a journey to to try to not necessarily answer all the question but try to find some solution to better ourselves and better our planet. And uh, that's what my movies are about. I think they are inspiring. They are transforming. I don't try to preach. I always try to say, listen, here are the issues. How can we fix it? Uh, here are the solutions. And then um, just get involved. You know, I always say you, you really have to stop thinking somebody's going to save your butt you know there is no santa claus so stop praying and and act you know stop waiting and and heal uh stop following and become a leader i think that's when things are going to change when really um, the seven eight billion of us are going to be much more involved with each other realize we are all complementary we're all beautiful souls beautiful geniuses with infinite possibilities and skill but we are told uh, don't try we are told don't question. We are told, be afraid. So enough, enough of that fear system that uh, keep us in jail. I think the next revolution is a revolution of the mind when really we, the free people of planet Earth, are going to finally start uh, helping each other and be more collaborative and, and realize it's all about partnership. So one of the movies that you made, The Invocation, you met some and worked with some really amazing people. Um, Deepak Chopra, the Dalai Lama, Desmond Tutu. What was that like transformatively for you 
to be surrounded by these amazing beings? Well, look at my smile. That's that's the answer. I mean, obviously, uh, that that's the effect this type of human beings have on you. You know, they they are pure love, pure energy, pure intelligence. So obviously, it it, it moves you. It uh, it's it's enlighten you. It, uh, it it puts your soul in fire. It puts you in action. So it's it's a wake up call when you meet people like this and uh, and thank god we've got people like this and then when you become one of them by being inspired by them it's your job then to keep spreading that peace and love you know so the agent of change and we need we need more that is namaz more desmond tutu more deepak chopra uh, more dr sharon martin more emmanuel Etier. <laughs> you know, it's um, uh -huh. that that's how we trigger the the genius in each other, you know, by by keep inspiring each other. You know, it's uh, yeah, Desmond Tutu had a great uh, quote when I met him. He says, you know, I, I wish people realized that I am because we are. And and it is true, you know, you you really are not an island. You are really are not alone. We we are a, a really uh, eight billion uh, human ecosystem where all of us and quantum physics shows that that we are a big assemble of intertwined molecules so when i'm depressed you're depressed when i'm happy you're happy so that, that's why it's very important for us to to realize that we are constantly connected even even through this silly device uh, through this uh, zoom conference we're having right now the, the molecules are connected to the phone goes through the the system and comes out and, and and you feel it you feel it in my voice you feel it in my in my stare in my eyes um so that's that's super important you know i am because we are i am because we are it's, right. again it's the me myself and we you know we really need to shift that thinking we cannot 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 anymore suffocate you know narcissistic ego little world of me, myself, and I. That has killed us for the last 3,000 years, and it has to stop. So now we we need to, to dance. We need to connect. We need to be with each other more than ever. Well, my the spiritual community that I connect with uh, more intimately, um, we are very much um, focusing on how to respect the duality that brings individualism and yet stay in non-duality in terms of changing the world. And that's, that's a hard one because individualism is necessary as a human, um, but it also has, as we know, narcissism, greed, suffering, that's a hard. That's a hard thing to shift, isn't it? No, it's 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 not hard. It's about realizing that that's how you grow. You you suffocate and you die if you think about me, myself, and I. And you grow and you transform yourself if you think about me, myself, and we. So you have two choices in life: Do you want to die within, or do you want to expand? If you want to expand, you have to take chances on others. You have to connect with the others. That's how you're gonna grow. It's a. It's like when. You know, you you make the shift of being a, a single, selfish, narcissistic, ego-driven individual, and you say, "Oh, I'm going to marry this beautiful soul," and then next step, I'm going to have kids. Well, you know, these these are scary steps, right? They are expanding steps, but that's how you truly grow. Uh, and that that doesn't mean the individual die. The, the me myself is still there, but the I die. Me, myself, the I dies. And that's fine because you don't need me, myself, and I. You don't need three layers of narcissism and ego-driven uh, madness. You need two layers, some really self-confidence, some really good inner strength, and then you need to spread it. You need to give it away. You need to connect. And that's how you even expand more. That's how you grow more. Yes, I like that. Um, we're going to take a short break. And when I come back, I want to talk about how working for you, working in films can help change consensual reality and get let's get down to the actual talk about how do we liberate ourselves from believing everything 
that's just plastered out there and how to be discerning. So let's take a short break. Colton, shall we take a break now? Hi, everybody. I'm Doc Martin. We're back. I'm here with Emmanuel ETA. And we're talking about mind enslavement. We're talking about how we get trapped in someone else's beliefs. And even the beliefs, what well, happens to us all the time, the way we've been conditioned by our parents, by our upbringing. And for me, Emmanuel, it's important. And it's why I wrote my book that's coming out, Maximize Your Healing Power. One of the things that I fight against every day for my patients is to help them believe something other than what is all around them. You know, how do you even believe something beyond the results of the x-ray? Um, to get out of that um, enslavement of your own fears, by your own fears, and how to see a destiny that may not be the obvious one and pick it and go for it. And so how are you doing that when you're making your films? How are you fighting the mind enslavement? Well, basically for me, uh, you know, when you do a documentary, whether it's on the notion of God or on women or on politics, any all of these big topics that I've embarked on, I always try to collect as much information as I can. And it's really uh, very broad. You know, I always say to people, you know, when I go to the gym in the, in the morning or afternoon, I always try to look at CNN and at Fox. Right? So I go from one side of the spectrum to the other. And when I conduct my, my documentaries, I interview people on any topic, I'm going to go pretty wide. I'm going to go uh, with uh, the, the really fake news people, with uh, ultra liberal, with uh, the, the fanatics. And, and I want to collect information and I want to listen and, uh, and I want to see what my mind thinks. You know, I think uh, don't underestimate yourself, your power of, uh, of really being objective. You can do it. Uh, so it's okay to have been pre-programmed through your parenting, through your culture, your religion. We all program at a certain point and manipulated when we are young because we are told, listen, believe, and shut up. That's basically the free word that I use on us. But as we grow uh, older, we can take a little bit of distance. We can elevate our mind. We can, you know, open the the, the window of our mind and uh, and and escape and and free our mind and um, it's it's again it's with a lot of strong will and and about just saying you know that doesn't feel right it feels weird I, I don't feel okay I you know it gives me a headache uh, so if it does have some effect on my body and I don't feel happy maybe maybe it's not the, the truth you know because if it was my entire body would accept it. You know, and, and also it's it's about looking around and, you know, whatever people tell you to believe, it's like, well, okay, but does it work for them? Does it work for the rest of the world? I always love that all this, what I call the charlatan, the gurus of, of today, and there are so many, you know, preaching, oh, you have to do this and that, it's about you, it's about that. It's a, and, and, and you look at their life and A, their life is a mess and B, the world is not, not really changing based on what they say. So if it's not changing based on what they say and the truth that they are pretending is true, uh, that's what we mean that it's not true, right? I mean, look at, uh, we are 5,000 years almost after all the monotheist religion and what have they done? Mm, not much. There's never been that much poverty, death, disease, misery. So there might be a little bit of truth, but there's a lot of, maybe not lies, but distorted truth, you know. So be careful. Uh, again, don't stop believing in Santa Claus, okay? Uh, we are told that 10-year-old, no, there is no Santa Claus. So, okay, so there is no Santa Claus. There, there is you and I. Yeah, there is we, you know, we the people of Earth with incredible skill, incredible possibility, incredible genius, and together we can solve any problem at us. We can solve all the environmental problems, all the poverty, all the economical stuff. But it's together, and it's really as partners, not as a master and slaves. 
we still have a world which is really led by a few masters. You know, look at all the leaders of the world constantly fighting, constantly, you know, raising costs and speculating and, and us the slave. What I say, that's enough. I'm too tired to be a slave. So it's time for a re-evolution, you know. I think one of the things you said is what I encounter in the my clinic every day that I that I work. And people watching the news and they're angry and they're irritated and they're uh, complaining and this and that. And I try to tell them if you, that's how it makes you feel, that's not, that's, it, even if we bring it down just to your body, that is not good for your body. That is not good for your health. So if you can train somebody to be more aware of how they feel, and that feeling should be at the very least contentment, even if before you get to joy and bliss, that's got to be better for you. Um, well, that, it, yeah, I think it's about balance. So there is also the the danger of only believing in your feeling, because as you know, feelings are regulated by hormones, by nerves by a structure of neuron that can be unstructured if you are uh, in stress, if you are uh, at midlife crisis, menopause, and men go through the same. So uh, we, we all go through a, a genetic and hormonal changes as we go older or when we're young, when we're 16 and full of hormonal rage. So be careful to your feeling. Trust your guts, your feeling, but to a certain extent. And be, be really in balance in balance between your mind and your feeling. That's very important. You need to do a, a, a balance of check all the time. So, so again, trust your feeling, but to a certain point, because they're going to blind you, like trust your mind, but to a certain point, because if you overanalyze, then you become cuckoo, then you become paranoid. So it's, it's, it's very tricky. You know, I always say it's, I, I think, so it's the mind, Therefore, I am. That's kind of the feeling. Therefore, I do. And that's really the balance between the mind and the feeling, uh, having a conversation and saying, okay, this is the most tangible uh, direction based on all this analysis and all this, this feeling, this, this uh, being. So again, it's, in life, it's never one thing. It's it's all of it, you know. It's it's a combination of 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 solution. It's a combination of elements, you know. So don't don't think it's a simple path. It's not a simple path. Uh, the simple path is to go from A to B. But to go from A to B, it's a combination of various, you know, feeling, thinking, adjustment, notes and bolts. Uh, it's a little bit more complex, without again falling into too much self-analysis because then you end up being totally cuckoo as well. So that's, mm -hmm. that's my thought. Mm -hmm. So how do you sustain, you personally sustain spiritually? Well, let's uh, analyze the word spiritually because nobody understands it. Spiritually come from spiritual, spiritual come from espiritu, which is a Latin uh, word that means the breath. So how do you survive spiritually? By breathing. You know, and most people don't even do that. That's how you survive. Most people, they, they, they lack of oxygen for their mind, for their body. They, they are so stressed or they do so many drugs or they, they, they don't stop or they, or they stop too much. You know, again, it's balance. That's, that's how you survive, by being in balance and check with yourself constantly and by breathing. Do you have a spiritual practice? Do you, I just did, I just did it. it. I, did you? Mm -hmm. I was breathing, thinking if breathing. Yes, go ahead. You met uh, Desmond and the Dalai Lama. Did that change? Did that make so, you meditate every day? Did that? So that's that's the interesting thing. Look again, we are it beyond people. Most people have a different spiritual practice, ritual, and it's all good. So why do you want to lock yourself in one path, in one spirituality, in one ritual? That's when your mind 
is going to get itself enslaved because your mind's going to get used to that practice and your mind's going to get comfortable. And when your mind is too comfortable, there is no more electricity in your brain. The reason we think and we create anything is because our brain is in constant agitation to a certain degree. Cannot be too much in constant agitation. So it's there also about balance between, you know, being agitated and in peace. But for sure, if you do always the same thing every day, same ritual of yoga, praying, meditation, you're going to fall asleep. You're going to be enslaved. And when you're enslaved, it becomes very dangerous because you get disconnected from the others and you start looking at the other thinking, well, what's his problem or her problem? She's not meditating enough. She must be a bad person. Oh, look at him. He's not praying enough. He must be an heretic. So that's why I never show the religion. That's why I never show the spiritual path or a, a ritual. I think it's all good. And at the same time, it's all very dangerous if you fall into it. So I adapt. I evolve. I change. One day, I'm a Christian. One day I'm a Muslim. One day I'm a Buddhist. One day I'm an atheist. One day I'm nothing. One day I pray. One day I meditate. One day I just talk. Wait, why, why would you want to do always the same? One day I touch a crystal. One day I hate the crystal. Yeah, it's, don't, for, don't enslave your mind. Don't enslave your spirit. You are breath. You are air. You are oxygen. So keep breathing. Keep circulating. Keep surfing the universe. Never stop, always embrace, always transcend. That's ultimate freedom. That stimulation, otherwise you're right, we're stagnant. Exactly. You don't want to be a, a, a dormant lake. You want to be a, a constant fall, a fountain, you know, water in, in evolving, you know, boiling, you know, exploding, then being at peace, you know. If not, you die. You're just a, 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 an inert surface. You, you, that, that's how you suffocate. So keep breathing. And breathe, exhale, inhale, all type of path, all type of situation. You know, take a hike, go swim. Don't always do the same thing. It's terrible. Don't do that. It, you will suffocate, guarantee. Well, you know, it's interesting because those are the things that the five rules that the neurologists tell you to avoid dementia. Socialize, so get out there and be with other people. Read, bring in stuff, balance different things of eating, different ways of exercising. So it's all, keep things stimulated, keep it all juicy. Exactly. And that's why I always love when... You know, I do my journey and I meet a Deepak and a Dalai Lama and they say, oh, yeah, you should do more of this and this and that. I'm like, no, no, I'm doing enough. Now I'm going to try something else. Don't try to uh, to get me into your spider web of deception where it's it's all about you and it's not about we. You know, again, you, you Dalai Lama, it's good. Do your stuff. You, Deepak, do your stuff. But don't don't force people to only follow you, you know. That's why we are 8 billion people. If not, there will be only one mind. That's why we have 8 billion minds. And they're all independent. They're all individual, as you said. And they're all complementary. You know, and they can all teach to each other something. They can heal each other. Good. Let's take a short break. And when we come back, I want to talk more about what you're thinking for your next projects. And uh, we'll talk about that after a short break. It's a good one. Come back. <laughs> Hi, everybody. We're back. I'm Doc Martin on Maximum Medicine Radio, here with filmmaker Emmanuel ETA. And Emmanuel, tell us about your new venture. Tell us about... So, yeah, as you, uh, we, we started to say, that I'm finishing right now a movie that we're going to talk about after, which is called uh, H2O, The Intelligence of Water. Uh, but also, I just announced a, a movie that I think is going to be really transformative. It's called The Growth of Man. And it's kind of a companion movie for a documentary I did 10 years ago called Femme, Women Healing the World. And that movie... Uh, that I did with uh, Sean Stone, who is uh, 
my producing partner on many of his doc, uh, it was a, a look at how women are transforming the world. And, and we sure saw within the last 30 years, 20 years, 10 years, especially the last five years, a lot of transformation. I think women are on the forefront of transformation, of leadership. So, uh, but by doing that, we have caused a uh, good thing and bad thing. The good thing is obviously we needed to put back women in, in key position of power, uh, in key position of equity and partnership, uh, and, and realize that together with us, the men, uh, we create life. Um, but sometimes sometime we went too far and, and we started to think, oh, all men are Harvey Weinstein, all men are Epstein and, and all these monsters, all men are Putin, you know. And it's not true, you know. Uh, so now men have a bad rep, I feel. And uh, and the growth of men is about that. It's about trying to to really demystify the notion that all men are douchebags and that uh, really we need to take care of our men. Because if we look at what's going on in the world, the, the degree, the extreme violence, it's because men are snapping every day. They are, they are falling apart. They are committing suicide. They are shooting. They are... They are bloodthirsty for war, for conquering, for destroying. So they, they snap. And the reason they snap is because they've been pushed away. Uh, and, and I think they, like little boys, they have a, an existentialist crisis. So they are in the midlife crisis. So I think we need to really help them. Uh, we need you women to really help them as well. So um, so it's going to be a very important movie. Sean Stone is on board to produce with me that movie again. Uh, and we're going to travel the world and talk to men um, who are, you know, in this deep crisis, but also men who are, you know, showing sign of leadership and, and, and of re-evolution to build a better world. So I'm very excited about this movie. I think it's going to be uh, mind changing, I, I hope. Game changing, I hope. Well, you know, what, I've, what I have seen over the years I've observed is some of the changing in parenting styles. And mm -hmm. I see it perhaps more so in Europe, um, the men taking paternity leave, the men being the ones to go to the grocery, pushing the kids in the stroller, the things that when I grew up, the fathers never did. Um, and those kinds of shifts in roles, the integration of the roles, especially within the family, I I just always feel really good when I see that and yes. to have be ready for that. Yes, except the problem is a lot of women take that for weakness and they think that suddenly the men uh, are not up to their game and they are losing respect and they take them for granted because suddenly the men become the women in a way. So a lot of women are turned into alpha males suddenly. So that's where the danger and the limitation of this uh, role changing uh, is. And that doesn't mean, the, it, it, needs, it needs balance. That's what it needs. It needs balance. It needs compassion. It needs both sides to realize you are both alpha and beta. You know, you're both male and female. It depends on the situation. When you're parenting, for example, you can be both a little bit affirmative and a little bit sensitive. Um, so it's not replacing one world by another, you know, and I, and I see too many right. times in couple that have a problem because suddenly the, the man is becoming oversensitive, is becoming over feminine in a way. And the woman is like, ah, well, now I want to be the man. Now it's my turn to play. Now it's my turn to be naughty. Now it's my turn to show you who's in charge. Now it's my turn to make the money. And, and they put down the men. So it it's really has to be addressed with cautiousness, with love, with respect. And, and again, at the end of the day, it has to be about balance. It has to be about partnership. It has to be about realizing nobody is in charge. We are in charge. We, the men and the woman in a couple. And it's not about one taking over the other like it was in the old days, and that's why we're paying the price, we men, we men today. I'm always, I'm always astonished when I see in the news, and we have these extremely strong um, men 
uh, aggressive men in leadership, uh, war warlike men, surrounded by these adoring women. Um, and when I think about the violence these men perpetrate in many ways and having the women just be all gaga about their, about their power their They love that power. And I'm always astonished how that can, how that can go on. Yeah. So first this is a very, very minority. Again, we can, it's a cliche. We cannot say that it's happening everywhere every day. So a, we cannot, tell our audience that it's happening everywhere. That's not true, A. Eh? And B, if we analyze why we got to this point, well, it's also women who educated their daughter to be like that as well. So the, the guilt is on both the men who definitely were raised as macho douchebag uh, and the women who accepted their daughter to be enslaved and in a way prostituted them to this man. So the guilt... Uh, is on both sides. It cannot be put all on, on this type of men who themselves are to a certain point victim of father who enslave them to be this way. So it's it's a, a little bit more complex. And at the mm -hmm. same time, this is a minority problem. You know, the vast majority of, of couple and of parents and, and men and women are good. You know, it's, uh, and by the way, you've got also women playing with men. Let's talk about all the women uh, who are using men as sugar daddies. So that's the same right. abuse reversed. That's the mm -hmm. same cruelty. That's the same uh, deceiving attitude to pretend uh, that you care when really you don't. You just want to be sugar fed. So let's be a little bit more honest about what's going on. Yeah, it's a, it, it is complex. Mm -hmm. and, and it's both sides. Both sides can be mm -hmm. very, very deceiving, men and women. Yeah. So, Colton, let's. this is a good place to break. Then we can save the rest of the time uh, for talking about Emmanuel's other project on water. Uh, so, Colton, let's take our last break now. Hi, everybody. We're back for our last segment. I'm Doc Martin on Maximum Medicine. And Emmanuel ETA is going to tell us about his project on water, which the topic I love. So, Emmanuel, tell us about that. Yeah, so that's uh, the, the current uh, documentary I'm uh, about to complete. We have just started editing it after filming around the world for almost two years, two years and a half. Uh, it's called H2O, The Intelligence of Water. So, as we know, uh, our body and mind is uh, made roughly of 70% of water. The planet is made of 70% of water. So there must be some type of uh, visible and invisible relationship between us and water, right? So that's what the movie is about. Mm -hmm. It's about trying to find that degree of uh, relationship, of balance, of intelligence between us and H2O. And of course, we uh, are talking about the work of Dr. Emoto, but uh, we've been really going around uh, with Dr. Polak and, and many, many other uh, amazing, inspiring personalities. Um, I think it's going to be uh, another quite uh, mind-blowing uh, experience when you watch it. It should be done, um, hopefully, by, by the summer. What was one of the things that you learned that you had no idea about? Was there something? Well, it's again, how, how water is is one of these elements that's that's shifting shape, you know, and form. And it's amazing, you know, the ice, uh, the the vapor, the the liquid. I mean, and it makes me think in a way about us, you know, how we are constantly shifting and transforming. I mean, look at our body is evolving from a baby to an adult to old, and then we die. But does that mean it's gone? Probably not. You know, I mean, you know, Einstein said nothing is created, nothing is uh, destroyed, everything is transformed. So the molecules, uh, where does that go? Where does that mix with the rest of the molecules in the and the atoms in the universe? Uh, is that God? 
who knows? You know, I mean, everything is open for debate, uh, for speculation. What, what is, um, is, is revealing to me is that, again, we have very few answers right now about where we come from, who we are, where we're going, what is there, what is that existence, life, you know. It's fascinating to me. And that's what I do every time with any of the doc I embark on. And I'm, I'm, I'm just... I'm a glutton to find out what's what's next, what's what's going on, you know, because how can you be satisfied by 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 this life right now, which is really a, a lot is in chaos. There is some joy, there is some happiness, thank God, but there is a lot of fixing to be done. So how do we fix it? Well, I think we fix it by questioning, you know, and it doesn't mean that you you d- destroy. Uh, all the belief system, it just means that you are trying to fix it. You're trying to evolve. You're trying to say, okay, uh, what, what is life? What is God? You know, is it a dude in the cloud that's making uh, happiness and, uh, and sadness, uh, life and death? Probably not, you know, and, and why would it be more dude than a dude <laughs> dead? So, so H2O, the intelligence of water to be seen very soon uh, on iTunes, uh, Hopefully Netflix, you know, and everywhere else, Amazon and so on, which is, by the way, where you can see all my movies. Wonderful. Um, what I like is consciousness affecting water or water merging into consciousness. Did you did you have any um, realizations about that along the way? Again, I think, you know, nobody has the answer to that question. Uh, if we had, we would be a little bit more aware uh, at understanding what is consciousness. And obviously, we are totally clueless. We have no idea of that work, and that is consciousness. But how does that work? We, we barely use 5% of our brain capacity. So we have no idea. So I know I didn't find, sorry to say, I didn't find any uh, more truth about how consciousness works. You know, what my instinct tell me, what my feeling, my gut feeling tell me is that, yes, by what we learn from quantum physics, consciousness is definitely an assemble of molecule, of synapses, all connected. Uh, and all this connection creates something, creates existence. Now, is it a super mind? Is it a higher power? I think it's a little bit naive at this point to to accept that because again, if there was a Superman and a, a higher power and a bigger divine creature, uh, one has to explain to me why uh, it's um, not working better. You know why uh, we are such in in a, in a crisis. So I, I think it's a little bit more complex. It has to be found. You know, it has to be explored, studied. And maybe one day we will we will have some answer. Maybe you know. Let's let's keep looking. The journey is right there in front of us. Let's embrace it. And meanwhile, let's enjoy each other. Let's laugh. Let's love. You know. Let's not forget about uh, here in this moment, in this present. So after you you have an idea for the growth of man. What's coming? What other ideas are percolating around? Well, it takes a lot of uh, my mind, and you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a man that uh, is married, so I put a lot of mind and effort in my wife, uh, in my kids, three boys, uh, in my other job. I'm a journalist. I consult for distribution. I do other production, uh, even to make extra money right now because business is tough. I sell car on the side, so. I don't really have the time to think beyond more than one or two movies at a time. I'm not that intelligent. You know, I'm a very simple man with big dreams, but I'm a very mm-hmm. simple man. And that humbleness uh, keep me grounded, keep me in reality, keep me in check, uh, keep me in the me, myself, but not falling into the I, but falling into love with the we. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I want to keep that. So I avoid trying to overthinking ahead of time. I think that's that's how you lose yourself. Mm-hmm. How long do you think your next project will take? By experience, all the projects 
uh, take anywhere from a year and a half to three, four years. And the simple reason is because obviously you have many challenges. You have the challenge to find the money. You have the, which is, you know, donation, uh, equity investors, uh, distributor buying sometimes some rights. Uh, so you have that challenge. You have the challenge of getting the list of people together that you want to interview and getting to them and having them give you some time. So you don't control that time. So, you know, think, uh, you think that getting to a Dalai Lama is easy? No, it took me three years to get to it. Uh, to get to Sean Stone, same thing. It was a two-year process. So it's totally unpredictable, but by experience, I've done eight features now, eight documentaries, feature documentaries. All of them took anywhere from a year and a half to three, four years. Mm -hmm. So we have a few minutes left. Do you have any thoughts for the listeners, any wisdoms you've learned along the way? It's all about waking up. So stop believing in Santa Claus, wake up, stand up, claim your freedom. You're a free creature, full of peace, full of love, full of action. Just do that. Put your thoughts into action. The, the, the meaning of life is happiness. Happiness is about, I think, therefore I am, therefore I do. I think, see what, what you are all about. Make a quick analysis of your skill, of your uh, feeling and gut feeling, and then be that, digest, feel it, and then put it in action. If you do that, I think, therefore I am, therefore I do, you will be happy because that happiness is giving a, a meaning to your life. That's the meaning of life. When you find your true purpose, what you are made for, how you connect with the other, how together we are building life and we're expanding and we're surfing the universe. So come with me, wake up, let's go surf the universe right now. I love you. Right now. Wonderful. Emmanuel, thank you so much for being with me tonight. It was wonderful to meet you in person after talking to you on email. And I really look forward to your next movies coming out. Thank you a million for what you bring to the planet. Well, thank you, Dr. Martin. And thank you to you as well, beautiful soul. Uh, everybody has to read your upcoming book. I endorsed it and I support it. So thank you again for your show, for your time and for your creation. All right. That's right. From my mind to my action. Exactly. All Much right. Love. Take good you care. too. Thank you. Thank you, you, Cole. We'll finish up now. You've been listening to Maximum Medicine Radio with Doc Martin. Tune in next time while the doc talks health, spirituality, and the impact your beliefs have on every part of who you are, body and soul. Doc Martin unpacks the challenges we face as human beings and teaches callers to open the door between the scientific and the mystical. To learn more about Doc Martin and Maximum Medicine, visit www.sharonmartinmd.com.